It's relative uh, to all that. But Sam Bradshaw, Sikkim365.com. Sam, outside, like, you know, you're not watching film and breaking down, you know, emotional output when it comes to Baylor. I think that's probably even before you get in the weeds on talent, what maybe their biggest issue is, is that they, they have a confidence problem. They have an emotional problem. They can't really, you know, intersect those peaks at the same time, even, even against teams that they should beat handily. Uh, And they've got a team that's playing really confident right now coming in. But outside of that scheme wise, what does Baylor do that Texas could have problems with? Thanks for having me on. And I would add to that, you've got a situation where a lot of your better players are young, inexperienced, or injured problem. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about a Baylor team here that's missing its top quarterback, top running back, top safety, top linebacker, top defensive tackle. It keeps coming. Um, But getting more and more to what Baylor can do, Baylor's run game, particularly if Sawyer has the ability to run or if they get shaping in there, who can throw both of which are iffy at best. Um, they, that wide zone scheme does a good job kind of displacing the defense and Grimes does a really good job scheming things off of it. That could potentially give Texas some good, some good trouble on that. But really this is going to come down to, you know, what can Baylor do? I'm, I'm, I'm not as worried on the offense as I am defense. I mean, the offense, if Sawyer can run a little bit, I think you have at least a little bit to keep them off balance. But, you know, the passing output has to be an awful lot better than it was. That was last week was not serviceable. And if it's not and if that's not gonna get it done, you probably need to get that Martinez kid a chance to sling it and put in a package for him. But defensively is where my biggest concern is. Um, Sarkeesian is one of the masters at just what you do, I'm gonna use pre snap motion formation show your guys a couple different things and then from there i'm going to get a situation where my guy has the edge on yours multiple times last year uh once out of the wildcat and once near the goal line where they uh tossed it to Bijan. they motioned away from where they were going and then baylor's defense predictably adjusted and then they had open grass with leverage for the offensive player I think this is a game where even if your guys don't match up all that great in the back end, being aggressive, hitting them with them some with some heavy zone pressures and doing some other things just to try and get them off kilter is going to probably be your best option. Ewers is very, very good when he's on, but he can be a little erratic and a little streaky. And uh, you saw that against Wyoming. And if the Bears can do that, that will make this game a lot more interesting. Texas is obviously a lot deeper uh, than Baylor. Is the secondary versus those receivers the matchup that is the most troubling? When you've got Xavier Worthy and Jatavian Sanders, and I mean, heck, Isaiah Neor has not even played, right? And that was a guy they were thrilled about having. Jordan Whittington's like the fourth option. They are so unbelievably pick your poison on offense right now when they are going. Uh, this is this kind of pales in comparison to a lot of the teams or those teams pale in comparison to what Texas has thrown out this year. Well, I think they've got a good set of skill guys. I mean, Xavier Worthy has been their hundred meter dangerous guy that you have to keep your eyes on the whole time for a couple of years now. Um, and then of course, getting the Georgia transfer is huge. And then winning is a nice complimentary piece. And then Sanders is a pretty solid receiver in his own right. But what makes him really difficult is they can put him into patterns and they can use him as a receiving threat out of different formations because he's a tight end that's that versatile. And it works really well with Sark's design. You know, Baylor's got some limited limitations on the defensive end just in terms of how, how they're going to match up the coverage. So getting some of those guys back healthy, particularly if they can get the nose tackle, that could potentially help a lot, but really I'm more worried about the overall approach. Are you going to sit back in some of your more conservative looks and let yourself be schemed of, schemed against, or are you going to try and disrupt these guys? And, you know, you might give up a play or two, but you also might get off the field a couple of times. And getting off the field a couple of times, if your offense can get it going and milk some clocks, that could lead you into an interesting situation late in the game. So, Sam, um, what is your best prediction for how this game is going to play out? 
I think Texas is going to get out to a lead. I think they're. I think it's not the Alabama game. It's not some other game. I don't think they're. My best description on Texas offensively is it reminds me a lot of 2010 Baylor, not 2011 when Rob won the Heisman and everything like that. It's an offense that you can see where they're going, but so many of the parts are still kind of young, but kind of getting their experience in. You've got a lot of ability to do a lot of different things, but the precision's not quite there. Yeah. And as such, you have games where those offenses would potentially disappoint. You know, um, you saw a couple of those with Baylor where they hit a couple big plays against A&M that year, but the offense buttered apart from that. And they had the awful outing in Fort Worth, and then they had the bad bowl game against Illinois. But then the following year, they were a juggernaut. You know, I feel like this Texas team is very talented, but they are very young. I mean, they've got like maybe five offensive linemen with any real experience. Now, they're all highly recruited guys, but that's not a whole lot of experience in that depth. And you've, you've got similar situations at different parts of that roster that if you can disrupt them, you have a chance. I don't think they're quote unquote back yet. I think that they've got, I think they're on the way to being. And Sarkeesian's a guy that took Washington from 0 and 11 and brought them to like two or three consecutive bowls and left a full cupboard for Chris Peterson to take the next leg with. Um, I think they'll get there. It's just, I think they're a year away. Do you think that Quinn Ewers is a year away too, then, based on that? Well, I think his maturity has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, I, I feel like he's a guy that can be a little streaky right now, uh, just through stretches of that Wyoming game. But when he's on, he's really on. And you even saw that a little bit in the Baylor game last year until Baylor's defensive front wore out and Texas was able to kind of just get what they wanted late in the game in the run game. Um, but, you know, I feel like he's got all the tools. And when he's on, his accuracy is really good. But he, I don't think he's quite there yet. But he's got the tools to really develop into something. So, Sam, um, after this week, like, you know, this is going to be a big game full of emotion for fans. This is the, you know, kind of for Baylor fans, the good riddance Texas game, you know, uh, on your way out the door kind of a thing. Now, look, the, the stadium's going to be a lot of burnt orange. It's sold out. The students' allotment is sold out. That does not happen uh, all that often, um, uh, you know, where they're just going to be wall to wall, uh, green and gold on that side. But um, how much does emotion have to play a factor in this game for Baylor? I think in terms of focus and preparation, it absolutely does. I think it'll definitely play a role. Um, you know, you, you got to get up for games against in-state opponents. You absolutely have to. Um, and you know they definitely want to send Texas out with an L. You know all the remaining Big 12 teams absolutely want to do that, both them and Oklahoma. Um, you know, so it's definitely front of mind. But I'm, you know, I'm much more of the mind, let's, Let's just see how Baylor handles Baylor. So so far this year, you've seen spots where they've looked really good. Like the offense with Sawyer in the first half against Utah looked really good. And then once he got injured, everything fell apart. And then you saw you saw stretches where that defense was playing well until they had an awful drive with 10 guys on the field late in the game to let them tie it, and then everything unraveled. You know, you've seen stretches where these – guys who've actually played reasonably well but they've got to put it together and they've got and honestly to win this weekend they probably need a little help from Texas making some mistakes and here's hoping some uh, young guys can do that what do you think this game means for the rest of the season for Baylor honestly not a lot um, other than another win and a chance to really just grab some momentum but in the grand scheme of things it's going to come down to can you get your act together week in, week out? That's something that eluded this team for the most part. And, you know, you so much of it is what you're doing, not necessarily who you're facing, which is why you've seen them look pretty poorly against two of the weaker teams they played. I mean, don't get me wrong. Long Island was never going to win that game. But just 
the sloppy play on a couple defensive possessions there, and then offensively just not being in sync at all and letting a receiver get deep and outside on a, on top of a defender who was playing deep and outside of him. Um, you know, you just can't have that. I mean, you can't let that, let that sweep series and that quarterback sweep series, the receiver and quarterback attacking each edge. You can't really let that tear you apart. You know, you've got to find a way to get things done and handle your business. That's not your opponent being so good. That's you needing to handle your business. If they do that, this is a team that can rattle off a few wins. But we need to see them do it. Sam Bradshaw, Sikkim365.com. Sam, great stuff. We'll talk to you again next week. All right. Thank you. Sam Bradshaw. And 